Hello everyone, this is a continuation of Lesson 2A for Contemporary Math. So, in this half of the lesson, we will talk about multiplying powers of 10 and identifying and using and converting units. Let's begin. So just uh, very quickly, and I want to say recall, but maybe you've taken a chemistry class where you've had to use, or a biology class, where you've had to use uh, scientific notation. And it just comes out to be a couple, uh, just a couple very quick uh, facts that you need to know to be successful with uh, multiplying powers of 10. So if you're multiplying powers of 10, you will add the exponents. So if you'll notice here, four and seven, when you add those together, you'll get 11. So four to the, uh, 10 to the fourth times 10 to the seventh is 10 to the 11th. And all of these numbers are referring to four, seven, and 11. Basically, how many zeros are after the one? So 10 to the fourth means we have one followed by one, two, three, four zeros, 10 to the seventh, same thing, one, seven zeros. And if you add the number of zeros together, you'll get 11 zeros. 10 to the 11th. Now, uh, for dividing, it's just slightly different. When you divide, you will subtract the bottom number from the top. All right, so we would say this turns into 10 to the 5 minus 3, the bottom minus the top. 5 minus 3 is just 2. So that's how we do it. In a, sense, in, a, in a sense, we are just taking zeros away. So here we would be taking three zeros away, one, two, three. We would be taking three zeros away, one, two, three, and just be left with two zeros. So using that information, we can uh, just very quickly go through these next few examples. So here I have filled these uh, answers in here. And again, when you're multiplying, you will just add these two numbers together. So three, uh, five plus a negative three will give you two. And here's some math going on in the background. Negative eight plus a negative five will give you a negative 13. So something similar to over here, we always take, uh, take away the bottom exponent from the top. So this would be three minus seven, or three take away seven, which would leave you with a negative four. And we, uh, with this example, we would have negative four take away negative six. And if you write that out, negative four take away negative six, you should remember that subtracting a negative becomes addition, which would be negative four plus six, which is why you get a two here. Uh, so for these six examples down here, I'm just going to stop talking here in a few seconds, pause the video, try these for yourself. I'm going to come back with the answers, and I'm not even going to go over them. So this is one of the easier topics we will do this entire semester. All right, here are the answers. 5 plus 6 is 11. And I'm going to do all the multiplications here. 4 plus a negative 3 is 1. Negative 2 plus a negative 4 is negative 6. For all the divisions, 10 minus 7 is 3. 2 minus 12 is negative 10. And 7 minus a negative 9, which would turn to addition, is 16. So let's look at units. So here, just very quickly, some key terms you'll need to know are units. Uh, the units of a quantity describe what the quantity measures or counts. Unit analysis is the process of working with units to help solve problems. And then we see these two words very, very frequently when we're working with units. One being per means for every, it tells you to divide. Uh, of means multiplication. But very quickly, before we look at the example down here, just to run you through a very quick uh, explanation as to why units are important, when you look at this 
uh, number here, 20. That number can mean many different things to many different people. That could mean $20, uh, 20 employees to lay off when companies are going through a restructuring or downsizing 20% wrong is different from 20% right both of those mean very different things or 20 decks of magic the gathering cards yes I'm a huge nerd um, so like that being said 20 this 20 can be, be meaning a lot of different things depending upon who you're talking to so it's always important to know what the units are of the numbers you're working with. Um, so let's take a look at this first example here really quickly. How much will a person pay for 3.1 pounds of grapes at a price of $1.25 per pound? So the word we want to focus on right here is per. So the units here will look something like this, $1.25, $1.25, and I'm going to use the word dollars uh, here instead of using the symbol, just so you can see how the unit analysis will work. Per means divide pound. Um, and to that, we are going to multiply 3.1 pounds. So kind of like what we were doing with the fractions over there on the other uh, few slides, we can also cancel units. So pounds will cancel with pounds, leaving us with 3.1 times 1.25 dollars. And when you multiply those two things together, those two numbers together, you'll get 3.88 dollars but this time I will use the dollar sign. So this is how units work. When we look at identifying units, uh, we want to state the units mathematically and in words. So both of these. So for example, the price you paid for gasoline is found by dividing the total cost in dollars by the number of gallons of gas you bought. Now that that's going to be that's going to be the entire phrase there is what we're looking at. So dividing the total number of cost in dollars, so I'm just going to write dollars again like I did last time. Oops, dollars divided by gas gallons. And you'll get exactly what you see over there uh, at basically every gas station it would be price per gallon. Oh, per just means divide. So in words, we could write price per gallon. Uh, take a few seconds, try these other couple examples here. You'll see dividing, you'll want to write it out in words, and a fraction. Go ahead and give that a shot. So here are the last two. We found by dividing distance in miles, so that's the actual unit we're looking for, by time elapsed in hours. So most of you know miles per hour from driving, or maybe if you run, my, you know, you keep track of how many miles uh, you can run in an hour. <clears throat> uh, and the last one here, dividing the price in dollars by the weight in pounds, dollars per pound, or maybe you would say price per pound. Uh, so there is a pretty important idea here with conversion factors. So a conversion factor is a statement of equality that is used to convert between units. So as you can tell, when we talk about units, a lot of times we have uh, some sort of fraction going on here. And <clears throat> one thing you can do is look at this particular um, equality here. So here comes some math for you. And if you divide both sides by one minute, 
the units of minutes will cancel here. And then 1 divided by 1 is 1, and 60 divided by 1 is 60. So we would have something like this going on right here. So that would be 60 seconds per minute. And that equals 1. Like that is, that is it. All of these units over here canceled, so it would just equal 1. This is a conversion factor. On the other hand, if you set up that same equation that we had over here, and you divide by 60 seconds, the seconds will cancel, and 60 divided by 60 will just be 1. And you can see now we can say it would be 1 minute per 60 seconds. And you might ask yourself, well, why do we care if the minutes are on top and seconds are on bottom, or seconds are on top and minutes are on bottom? It depends on how we are trying to convert. So it's very important to know which fraction you'll need to be working with. So by taking a look over here, it is asking you to convert a distance of nine feet into inches. So all I can start with is I know that I need to have nine feet and way over here, I need, I know I need to have inches. And most of the time, we just abbreviate inches over here with just IN. Feet, FT, inches, just IN. So we need to find a conversion factor that will make sure that we have feet in the bottom and inches in the top. That way, when we do our canceling, the feet will cancel, one in the top, one in the bottom, just like we were doing with our fractions. So the, the question then becomes, how many inches are in one foot? So that works out to be 12 inches per one foot. And that's it. We have now found our conversion factor. We know the feet are going to cancel. So we can just multiply 9 times 12 and use the unit inches. And that will leave us with 108 inches. So we can continue to do all of this for these last few examples down here. So see if you can find a conversion factor for each of these. And before I even get uh, too far, I want to give you the conversion factor for kilometers per hour to miles per hour, as well as the conversion uh, equation, I guess, for meters to feet. Go ahead and see if you can figure these out. So I realized I can't do these exercises with just writing them down. So I'm going to go through them as quickly as I can. So just like in this first example here, uh, I set up what we know and what we're trying to convert it into. And then I know I need to set up a fraction. So all the fractions I'm going to set up in blue color here. Times... And I know the unit I want to disappear, seconds, will have to go on the bottom. And the unit that I want in my answer, minutes, will have to go in the top. So we just saw it right up here. There's one minute per 60 seconds. So what that means then is I have to uh, multiply the 3,000 to the 1 and then divide that by 60. So 3,000 times 1 is 3,000. 3,000 divided by 60, you can use a scientific calculator or any calculator really, and you'll get 50 minutes. So in this next example here, converting 94 days into minutes, I don't know how many minutes are in a day. But I do know that there are 24 hours in one day. So that will cancel the day here. 
but this still doesn't get me to where I want to be. This is 24 hours. I want minutes. So I have to set up yet another fraction. I'm going to use green. So I know hour and minute. And yes, I know and you should know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. So what that means here is our final answer in minutes, right? We will multiply 94 times 24 times 60 and then divide it all by 1 because 1 times 1 is 1. This will be 135,360 minutes. Next, the meters to feet. You have this 1 meter to 3.28 feet and again we have to set up the fraction with the unit we want canceled in the bottom so one meter that way the meters will cancel and in the top the other unit over here 3.28 feet and when you multiply 12 times 3.28 and divide it by 1 you get 39 Point three six feet. I'm going to go back and circle all these answers because I have not been doing that. There we go. And lastly, this one is very strange. So it involves a fraction of units all the way across. So you can see that we start out with kilometers per hour and we end up in miles per hour. But our in the denominator does not change. So the only thing that we need to change is kilometers to miles. So we can multiply by a fraction and we're trying to get rid of the kilometer unit. So the kilometers will go on the bottom and the miles part will go into the top. The miles will not cancel here. There's no miles in the bottom of any fraction, and that's good because we want that as part of our answer. So all we have to do then is multiply the 100 times the 0 0.62 and get 62 miles per hour. One last type of conversion we have here are temperature conversions, and we have two different temperature scales in this world. It bothers me to no end, but here they are. We have Fahrenheit and Celsius. So uh, Fahrenheit uh, is just an oddball scale like most things in the US. Water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 degrees, whereas Celsius feels a whole lot better as water freezes at zero and boils at 100. So uh, here are the conversion formulas for Celsius and Fahrenheit. So uh, if you need to pause the video or rewind to look at these, I'm going to move right into the conversions. So we will have three conversions here. Um, and this last one here, you can go ahead and try for yourself and then you can Google around to see if the answer is correct. So we just want to convert from whatever we have, whatever unit we have, into the other unit. So I see a, a negative 8 degrees C here for Celsius. I want to turn this into degrees Fahrenheit. And we can do that by using the formulas that were above there. And we use this one because the variable we are looking for is already isolated. So if you're converting to degrees Fahrenheit, you want to use the F equals equation. And for like example two here, if you're converting to Celsius, you want to use this particular uh, equation because the units we want are already solved for. So then it becomes pretty simple really. We just have to substitute this number in for C because that's the number of degrees in Celsius. It'll give us an equation that looks like this. 
always replace your variables with parentheses around the value going in for it, so plus 32. And that gives you, uh, let's see, 17.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so then you can do something very similar over here. If you grab this 15 degrees Fahrenheit and push it in here for F, uh, you'll get an equation that looks like this. C equals 15 minus 32 over 1.8. Uh, and that will give you negative 9.4 degrees Celsius. Uh, so very quickly then, if you convert this to degrees Fahrenheit, it'll be 59 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's how you can check to see if you really understand what's going on. And that finally concludes the lesson for 2A. Good luck.